working now. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Problem Solving Assignment, COM 108, um, by Edwin, Nikki, Tim, and Jacob. Online learning has disrupted the college experience. No longer are we able to walk in, walk on campus, and enjoy the college experience of clubs, theater, and athletic events. In addition to not being able to have face-to-face -face learning is an extreme change as well. Some students have lost the ability to live in campus dorms and have had to have have had to find other living arrangements far more expensive, costly than the university would have charged. Why then, with a loss of a third to a half of the college experience, are students of the institution still asked to pay full tuition? The COVID-19 pandemic has turned the world upside down and we are no longer able to gather in large groups. In March 2020, California State University Fresno chose to continue with academia online, offering the same courses, but with a virtual instruction via Zoom or Google Hangout. This type of learning is different from face-to-face -face, and it creates a learning environment that is less than acceptable to some students. With, mo with the move to virtual learning is, is tolerable. Um, the move to virtual learning is tolerable and once done for a while, it gets to be what it is. The problem with online learning is the cost of tuition. Why are tuition fees and the same are the same for face-to-face -face learning? Group one will, will present problems and present solutions to address why students continue to pay regular school tuition during the pandemic online learning. Here's a certain, um, some criteria that we went over um, when thinking about this topic. Um, <clears throat> There are several criteria that we would feel will help in reducing tuition during a pandemic scenario. In our research, we found there are a lot of, there are many schools that have been affected by the pandemic and forced to resort to online learning and these schools have all taken action in one form or another to help in reducing the cost of tuition fees for students. In our criteria response, we will explain four criteria that we feel should have that hap should have happened for online learning that we are that we are forced to participate in if we are if we want to continue with our higher learning during a pandemic a criteria that would be helpful with this, these stressful pandemic times is to eliminate tuition fees altogether and allow the student to still attend online learning without having added stress of learning and feeling worried about paying for instruction that doesn't foster a satisfactory learning environment this is an example of what Southern New, Southern New Hampshire University did uh, when offering full tuition and scholarship to first year students enrolling on campus. Another idea we agreed on was to put a freeze on tuition or not to increase tuition fees until the following year. This option would give a grace period to the students to decide whether they want to continue or not with school and have that option to find other methods of paying for college or at the least save up some money. I feel like both of these criteria listed given give a perfect scenario of what should happen in a perfect world. Our next criteria would give was to give partial refund of unused fees back to the students because there are fees that are not being used due to campus involvement, not do not having campus involvement. In this case, the student can meet in the middle with the university. There are, off, there are areas of the school the students do not have access because of the social distancing and zero tolerance the school is placed on being on campus unless given special permission to be there. Group Run has also considered possibly reducing the amount of tuition and fees by 12% for the following year. Although this criterion is not the ideal way we would like to lower costs, but more of a realistic criterion. Now we'll go on to limitations of what the limitations to the criteria could be uh, given uh, they might work or not. <clears throat> In an ideal world, the pandemic would not exist, but it does now, it does for now. And dealing with the financially, financially has become a burden for most college students. This, the criteria we have listed have some limitations. I will now list them according to the criteria they belong to. Our first criteria listed was eliminate all tuition fees and until face-to-face -face learning can happen again. 
This criteria is great in the ideal world, but we live in a pandemic world and the school would probably never agree to give away the institution. A limitation to this is the school would lose money and they, will, they are in the business to make money. The second criteria would put, put a freeze on tuition or not to increase tuition fees until the following school year. This is a good idea because it allows students to figure it out financially and the school would save money or the school could save face with the student who was questioning if online learning was right for them. But this also gives the school a chance to work out how to give online instruction for learning online. A limitation to this would be that school has added the cost of learning online that does not come up. Schools have added costs to learning online that does not come into play when learning face-to-face. -face. Simply put, online learning costs the school more money to implement. The third criteria we would like to consider was part of partial refund of unused student tuition fees. This is a win-win for both the student and the school. The student would feel like they have gained a little bit of money back with a minimal damage on the wallet and the school can again feel they have given back some money to ease the hardship of a lot of students um, are because a lot of students are feeling because of the pandemic. The limitation to this would be not all students would get a partial refund because every student has certain fees that would not qualify for a refund, thus segregating a portion of the student population inciting more animosity among faculty and students. Our final criteria may be the simplest. This is, the possibly, this is to possibly give back tuition that this would, um, and this would be the school to issue a 12% reduction in the cost of tuition, saving the school some money, but not much. Out of all these criteria seems, that seems possible, pos most plausible, the limitation to the scenario would be the, that the school would would simply reduce the cost of savings to little to nothing, maybe only getting 5%, maybe. And the reduction to uh, this reduction would really not save anything for either the student or the school. Lastly, I'd like to say uh, the limitations are just, are just that. It's a limiting what we can ultimately be an easy fix to still have higher tuition fees during the pandemic online learning. These fixes described here are simple in, in our eyes to an ongoing problem. These are our views and sentiments of thousands of college students across the country who have seen their college experience be reduced to just looking at a computer screen and not looking at other students in person or enjoying the life, college life experience with on-campus activities. I say, let's all raise a cup to getting back to normal and at least back to face-to-face. So I will now pass off to Edwin, who will go over a list of possible solutions. Hello class, uh, my name is Edwin and I'll be going over everyone's uh, lists of possible solutions. Um, we have four group members, um, Edwin, which is me, Jacob, Tim and Nikki. So for my list, um, I'll start. We did, I think about five possible solutions assigned to everybody. So the first um, possible solution for me was allow undocumented students to apply for COVID-19 relief packages. Um, this solution will not only allow undocumented students to get more help for their education, but this will also help them excel in school. Uh, undocumented students will excel more in school because they won't have to worry about money or school fees anymore. For my second possible solution, um, I said, uh, give an efficient road to citizenship for undocumented students. Uh, so this solution will make the lives of undocumented students a lot easier, and it will be beneficial to offer a road uh, to citizenship. The reason being is because it is rare to see an undoc un undocumented student go into college, even with the high tuition cost, they have to pay out of pocket. This just shows how dedicated and hardworking they are for pursuing a career through a college education. For my third possible solution, um, I said, let's let undocumented students write hardship letters so the education president and vice president know who to help. While, so while all undocumented uh, students need help, there are some that need more help than others. By notifying undocumented students to write hardship letters, um, this will give the, edu the education president and vice president a better understanding of who they need to help out as soon as possible. <clears throat> and my fourth possible solution is to provide proper devices and technology 
to undocumented students so they have basic educational access to their homework assignments. Um, and this, so there are some undocumented students that can't afford to pay for technology in general. Um, it is the college's job to ensure that all students are equipped with the proper tools to succeed in college. And for my fifth and last possible solution, uh, I said, let schools have complete control of how the emergency grants get distributed. Um, and this solution will allow the schools to have complete control over the grants that get distributed to students. So if the government keeps deciding how the money should be spent, they have no idea the hardships undocumented students are going through. So they get left out of being able to receive those grants, which is it is advantage to them. I'll now be moving on to Jacob's list of possible solutions. Um, so for his first possible solution, he said to freeze tuition or not increase tuition for a year. Um, so by freezing tuition, this solution will give students some time to come up with the college tuition costs they have to pay out of pocket by not increasing the tuition for a year. Um, this will allow for students to be prepared to pay similar tuition costs without having any surprise fees come up. Um, for Jacob's second possible solution, he said partial refund on unused fees. This solution will put some money back into the pockets of students that are in need of money. There are several fees that colleges automatically charge students for and students never use the services because it isn't necessary. Um, therefore, those unused fees should be refunded back to students because as a college student, um, money is a need. And his third possible solution was to cut tuition by 12%. This solution will help alleviate some higher costs and lower them by 12%. This will help students save a decent amount of money uh, to be able to use it for bills, necessities, and food. And his fourth possible solution was to allow students to enroll in two classes for the price of one. So for this solution, it will be beneficial to students because it will cut the cost of two courses and combine it into one price that is significantly lower. So for example, if each course costs $500 each, then regularly for two courses, it would cost $1,000. But with this solution being implemented, it would only cost 500 for two courses, meaning each course would cost $250. Uh, this would save each student 500 useful dollars that can be used for other expenses. Um, and for his fifth and final possible solution, um, Jacob said um, that Southern New Hampshire is paying for a full year for incoming freshmen for on and campus summer classes. Um, so this solution would allow students enough time to settle in and get ready for college life. This would give them a glimpse of what college is about. This wouldn't overwhelm students with having to worry about all of the co college costs. This would enable students to strictly be able to learn for the first year of their college career, which is vital to their educational success. So now moving on to Nikki's list of possible solutions. Her first uh, possible solution is to offer a stipend for students who pay out of pocket tuition during the pandemic. Um, so providing all students with stipends each semester during the pandemic will allow some financial help during the hard times. This will allow students to pay for tuition or even help with their financial responsibilities. Um, her second possible solution was to offer free textbooks online for all students, for all classes that students take. Um, so having free textbooks will allow students to cut some of the costs for their courses. Textbooks can become very expensive, especially when you are a full-time student. This solution will cut down on some of the financial costs. So for her third possible solution, uh, Nikki said to cut fees and tuitions in half for students. This solution will allow students to have a bit of financial relief for a semester and have funds for other things needed throughout the semester. For her fourth possible solution, um, Nikki said offer the students who graduate during the pandemic and paid tuitions out of pocket from the university a discount if they decide to attend the master's program at the university. This solution allows students to receive a bit of money off of their tuition, especially if they attend a master's program at the university, which will allow the students who are planning to attend postgraduate at the university for a discount, which also helps with enrollment for the university. For her fifth and final possible solution, um, Nikki said future discounts on room and board also include included student meal plans who paid the full amount and had to leave the university because of COVID-19. 
So this solution offers refunds for students that were displaced and lost their stay at the dorms because of COVID-19. These students also didn't get to fully use their meal plans because of the school closure, which the student should be refunded for the portion of room and board and the meal plans that were not used. So now moving on to Tim's list of possible solutions. His first possible solution was to reduce or remove fees that are necessary to a virtual learning environment. Um, so reducing the fees that are not related to the virtual learning environment will lower the cost of tuition and fees. And his second possible solution was free or reduced price, prices for textbooks and class material. Um, so the textbooks and class materials should be free to help students with lower um, costs for the semester. His third possible solution is a refund of student room and board if staying in dormitory. So this solution will help the students who were displaced because of the pandemic and these students can be can use the refund for the fall semester. Um, his fourth possible solution was to remove student fees related to an on-campus environment, for example, health fees, ASB fee. This solution will eliminate student fees that do not benefit taking classes via Zoom. This will reduce uh, some of the amount. For his last and final possible solution, um, Tim offered uh, cheaper fees for the first two semesters on campus. Therefore, you get a better learning environment for less money. Um, so offering cheaper fees for the first semester back to having face-to-face -face courses, um, this should keep the enrollment high and the students happy with the reduced fees. Okay, so that's, that's the 20 um, possible solutions our group came up with. And once our group was ready to share their lists we came up with, we all had to meet several times to go through rounds of elimination. Um, these rounds of elimination helped us to come up with better solutions and to eliminate any possible solutions um, that are too far-fetched or unrealistic. We had four rounds of eliminations so that we could come up with the best possible solution. We went off of each other's thoughts and ideas to come up with ways to eliminate possible solutions and move closer to the solution we all thought was the best one. Um, so let's get the rounds of eliminations going. So for the first round of eliminations, um, that one was fairly easy because in total we had 20 possible solutions like I mentioned before. Um, and we all came up with, um, so now five possible solutions were assigned to each group member. Uh, this round of eliminations was easiest because the list is big and broad and we had several choices to choose from. We all decided on five possible solutions to get eliminated and those were cheaper fees for the first two semesters on campus, cut fees and tuitions in half for students, allow students to enroll in two classes for the price of one, freeze tuition or not increase tuition for a year and give an efficient road to citizenship for undocumented uh, students. Now for the second round of eliminations, that one was a bit harder to choose from because the amount of possible solutions is now slimmed down to 15. The next possible five possible solutions that we decided to eliminate were allow undocumented students to apply for COVID-19 relief packages. Southern New Hampshire is paying for a full year uh, for incoming freshmen for on-campus summer classes. Offer a discount to the master's program for students paying out of pocket refund of student room and board if staying in the dormitory and future discounts on room and board. In the third round of eliminations, there were some disagreements here and there, but after a long Zoom meeting, we decided on the last set of five possible solutions to eliminate, leaving us with 10 possible solutions. The last set of possible solutions to eliminate were uh, remove student fees related to on-campus environment, offer free textbooks online for all students, let undocumented students write hardship letters to so the education president and vice president know who to help. Provide proper devices and technology to undocumented students so they have basic educational access to their homework assignments. And offer a, a stipend for students who pay out of pocket tuition during the pandemic. So um, the fourth and last round of eliminations was by far the most difficult because the options were down to five. There were two possible solutions that we couldn't decide on which to eliminate. So we began by eliminating these three possible solutions. Let schools have complete control of how the emergency grants get distributed, reduce or remove fees that are unnecessary to a virtual learning environment and free or reduce prices for textbooks, class material, 
Um, the last two possible solutions left were cut tuition by 12% and partial refund of unused fees. As a group, we couldn't decide which one to eliminate out of these last two possible solutions. So we decided to combine them both into one final solution. Now, Nikki will go into more detail about the possible solutions and Tim will follow after into more detail about the final recommendation and that our group decided. Hello, I am Nikki Mays. The pandemic has caused a huge change in every college student life. Many students have been displaced as well as faced with major financial hardship. These students have had to adjust to taking courses fully online as well as not having any type of extracurricular activities due to the pandemic. The issue with the virtual learning style is some students feel as if fees and tuition should be refunded to reflect classes being fully online via Zoom. Due to the fact that students are not having in-person interaction with professors or even their classmates. There are various solutions that every student can benefit from regarding reducing fees and tuition. Our group has researched various solutions that would help students with their financial hardships and tuition. The first solution would be for the university to have complete control over the grants that are distributed to students. The government provides grants to many public institutions in which they set guidelines on how the money should be distributed to the students and used for the campus. The issue with this is sometimes certain students are left out of the criteria to receive the grants, such as undocumented students or even students whose parents pay out of pocket for tuition and fees. Additionally, providing students with a partial refund on unused fees will allow funds to be put back into the pockets of the students that are, that are in need of the fund. There are several fees that the university automatically charges students. Sometimes students never use the services because they don't need to use them. Therefore, those unused fees should be refunded back to the students because the pandemic has caused a huge impact financially. The next solution would be to have all textbooks available digitally online, free to all students. If the universities provide students to have access to free rented textbooks for all courses, this can reduce some of the fees that the students are faced with each semester. Textbooks can become very expensive, especially when you are a full-time student and the course requires multiple textbooks. At the height of the pandemic, students were displaced from dorms due to the high spread in COVID-19. Some of these students had to move back in with their parents. The students who paid for the students who paid for the whole semester to have room and board and meal plans basically lost out on the tuition and meal plan that had been paid for. So those students should receive a future discount for their room and board and their meal plans for the fall semester. This would be another way the university could help students that have been affected by the pandemic. Overall, understanding that the university can help all students during the pandemic by reducing the tuition fees and for the, for the fall semester so that students can have some relief financially. The solution that we feel as a group that every student would benefit from is reducing the tuition amounts by 12 to 18% for the fall semester. This would add a bit of relief to all students regarding the financial aspect of earning their higher education. We chose the 12 to 8% because we understand that some of the portion of the tuition does help pay for the professor's salary which we would like to keep the quality of professors at the university. Now that I have explained some of the solutions that would be the best for the students attending the university, now my group mate Tim will explain why the recommendation of the cut of tuition by 12 to 8% will be implemented in the fall semester. Thank you, Nikki. Hi everybody, I'm Tim and I'm gonna be going over our final solution to the problem at hand. So although there are numerous solutions that can remedy the current virtual tuition dilemma, one stands out as the most viable solution for both sides. This would be to cut tuition fees for the fall semester by 12 to 
This would essentially follow in the footsteps of what some universities have already done for the spring 2021 semester. For example, according to Kerr 2021, universities such as Georgetown University cut their tuitions, tuition fees by 10% and the University of Illinois did by 25%. The only major difference in this solution would be to push this reduction until the fall semester. On top of this, a partial refund of unused tuition fees, such as the university student union fee, health service fee, and all facility fees would be reimbursed to students for all semesters taught virtually. As a whole, Group 1 decided that this solution is the most appropriate and realistic to implement for a variety of reasons that will now be discussed. So what might this, this reduction in tuition do for Fresno State students? Well, cutting tuition fees by 12 to 18% for the upcoming fall semester would provide more benefits than one for both the University of Fresno State and its student body. For starters, fall 2021 will be Fresno State's return to face-to-face -face instruction after nearly 18 months of students being absent from campus due to COVID. The reality is that the university and the Cal State system as a whole simply cannot afford to reimburse students for primary tuition fees over the last three to four semesters. Therefore, what better way to incentivize the return to traditional instruction by offering a small yet considerable break for students? Overall, this solution will prevent the university from bleeding out all of its money, but still convey an act of consideration and fairness on the behalf of students. This can be said for professors as well who depend on the on tuition money to to finance their salaries. On the other hand, from the viewpoint of students, this tuition break could not come at a better time for two main reasons. The first being that the transition from virtual instruction back to face-to-face -to -face will be financially difficult for those who moved out of an apartment or even Fresno County as a whole during the pandemic. Therefore, having a bit of extra money that is usually spent on tuition would be extremely beneficial in finding a new apartment or even moving back into the dormitories. 2020 was also one of the worst recorded years in regards to unemployment. Therefore, this tuition break will significantly aid students who are out of work due to, the, due to the pandemic. Secondly, pushing tuition breaks until the fall semester allows students to not only save more money, but also receive quality face-to-face -face instruction at a reduced cost. Another aspect of the solution is in regards to a partial refund of inapp inapplicable tuition fees amongst a virtual setting of learning. After reviewing Fresno State's spring 2020 and 2021 tuition fees, there were four areas that clearly should be reimbursed for students. These were the university student union fee, health service fee, bulldog card fee, and all facility fees. All four fees come out to a total of $266 a semester. Therefore, even a partial reimbursement of these fees is essential as they pose no benefits to students on an online learning platform. Although a case can be made that these fees are essential to the way the university functions, it simply does not seem plausible with the current status of learning at Zoom University. The truth of this situation is that the university is struggling for money and still charging for these inapplicable fees. What does this mean for the students who are already thousands of dollars in debt during one of the largest economic disasters of the past century? Now that the final solution is laid out in detail, the only question to remain is, how do we determine the effectiveness and acceptability of the plan after it is implemented? As a group, we determined the best way to receive feedback would be in the form of a student assessment survey. This survey would include how students feel about the plan and if they think it was fair and realistic. In addition, students will also be asked if the plan was effective in assisting them economically during the transition back to norm normality. As a whole, the survey will be designed to target areas of concerns for students and how they feel it was handled. If there are any areas of concern or frustration that are reflected in the results, then the university can individually assess each matter to reach a conclusion. Moving on to the conclusion, overall, the switch to online learning has been a drastic change during a time of uncertainty and chaos around the world. Unfortunately, during this process, the college experience was taken away from students in virtually all aspects of higher education. That being said, there is no excuse to ask students to pay full tuition when the quality of learning has completely changed. Although there are numerous solutions to potentially solve this problem between Fresno State and its student body, the most viable plan is the one discussed within this paper. Cutting tuition prices by 12 to 18% for the fall semester would diffuse student frustration as seen by other universities who did so in the spring 2021 semester. It would not only assist students financially, but it would also incentivize the anticipated return to traditional instruction this fall. A company with a partial refund of an inapplicable fees during virtual learning this solution successfully targets areas of frustration that students have voiced. Simultaneously, the plan is respectful and conscious 
of the university's expenses, expenses and professor's salaries as well. Therefore, in terms of effectiveness, we believe this plan to be the final solution in regards to the virtual learning tuition dilemma at Fresno State. Thank you. Are we good? 